Welcome to your Monday edition of the Daily Update. I'm Jenny Rudolph. Ukraine rejects an ultimatum from Russia. That story tops today's Mustang Minute. Mariupol authorities have been ordered to surrender the city to Russian forces. However, the government and authorities in both Kyiv and the Mariupol city have rejected the Russian terms. With Ukraine's response, the Russian Defense Ministry is proposing to declare a ceasefire. Russia is now blaming Ukrainian bandits, who they believe are responsible for hundreds of lives of innocent people. Mariupol has been the center of some of the worst attacks since the Russian invasion began, including the deadly strike on a maternity ward and the bombing of a theater, where many children were reportedly in. The president of Ukraine says what the Russian forces did to Mariupol was an act of terror that will be remembered for centuries. Meanwhile, more than 3 million Ukrainians have fled to other countries. Four Marines killed during a training mission in Norway have been identified. Problems with the mission were reported Friday evening near the Arctic Circle. Later, a rescue helicopter was seen in the area where the plane went down. Still no word on what caused the crash, but all of the Marines' bodies have been recovered and are on their way to the U.S. Ten people are injured in a Dallas shooting early Sunday morning. One 18-year-old was left in critical condition at The Space, a Dallas party venue on Botham Jean Boulevard. The nine additional shooting victims are in stable condition, but Dallas police say several others were injured while trying to escape the scene. Police have not identified a suspect or motive at this time. More than 3,700 mail ballots are rejected in the four largest North Texas counties during the March 1st primary. That means 11% of mail voters in Dallas, Tarrant, Collin, and Denton counties had ballots tossed. Most ballots were not counted because they did not have the same voter ID information as when they registered and did not comply with the new Texas voting law. Of the mail ballots rejected, about 850 voters decided to surrender their votes instead of coming to the polls in person. And that's your Mustang Minute. A love of reading and a stronger community. That's what the Little Free Library is truly all about. All you have to do is bring a book and Drop it in the box, and if you would like, you can take a book or you can just donate your own book. Through these little mailboxes scattered throughout the U.S., millions of books are exchanged each year. That's a really good one. We love it because we have four kids, all different ages, and they each feel like they can be part of something by picking out their own book and taking it to donate and then choosing a book that they like as well because they all love to read and that they all just feel like they're part of something together as a family and they're doing something to give you know, to other people in the community. I love reading and I also like um, donating books also because it makes me feel good because I'm helping other people. These little libraries help increase reading achievement by giving access to books for readers of all ages and backgrounds. For more information and to find a little free library near you, visit littlefreelibrary.org. I'm Malia Masamoto with a look at what you might have missed last week during spring break. Here's your weekly roundup. An evacuation order is in effect for parts of West Texas after wildfires break out in four differing areas west of Fort Worth. Residents in Eastland, Erath, Hood, and Montague counties have been warned that their homes are in the path of raging fires. Evacuation orders are underway in Lipan, Tolar, and Bluffdale. The largest fire, the Kid Fire, is only about 30% contained, while a new fire called the Big L Fire is only about 5% contained. Firefighters are attacking the flames overhead and on the ground, but strong winds and dry conditions aren't making it easy to get these fires under control. Nine people are dead, including six student athletes and their coach, after a head-on collision in West Texas. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused a van carrying the men's and women's golf teams from the University of Southwest to burst into flames after it was hit by a pickup truck. Two others, including a 13-year-old, also died in the crash. Officials believe the truck crossed the center line, slamming into the van carrying the team. Both vehicles burst into flames. The teams were about an hour away from home in Hobbs, New Mexico. They had been participating in a tournament in Midland last Tuesday. March Madness is well underway and a lot of action took place last week in North Texas. 
The new Dickies Arena hosted the first round of the East Region, as teams like Baylor, North Carolina, UCLA, and St. Mary's tipped off. The new arena was built in 2019 and is home to the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo every January. But this is the first March Madness event in Fort Worth, and most fans seemed impressed with the new digs, even though some of those fans went home early. Number one seed Baylor lost to North Carolina in the second round of the NCAA tournament. The madness continues later this week. And talk about big! Now that the 90th anniversary of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is in the history books, so is the price tag for the Grand Champion Steer. It's a first for the Rodeo Circuit, 2022's Grand Champion Steer went for $1 million. The steer showed by Avon Horn of Anston, Texas, was sold to the rodeo's past president and chairman of the board, Don D. Jordan and family. The record-breaking $1 million steer blows the past sales away. The previous record was sold for a measly $625,000 back in 2019, which is pre-pandemic. That's what you missed during Spring Break Mustangs. I'm Malia Masamoto with your weekly roundup. We hope everyone had a happy St. Patrick's Day on Thursday, including the animals at Brookfield Zoo. Porcupines, gorillas, and many other animals at the Chicago Zoo enjoyed green-themed and shamrock-shaped treats to celebrate the holiday. Gray seals and bottlenose dolphins received treats made of green-dyed squid, while Hudson the polar bear enjoyed a green block of ice with fish and meat bones frozen inside. It's safe to say on St. Patrick's Day, even zoo animals deserve some good luck. Well, that's all we have for you today, Mustangs. Remember, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash SMU television and follow us on Twitter at SMU TV. If you have any story ideas, shoot us an email, smutv at smu.edu. Thanks for watching this Monday edition of the Daily Update. Tune in Tuesday for more news from the Hilltop. Until then, have a great day on this National Common Courtesy Day. Go out there and be courteous. We'll see you back here next time. Pony up. SMU TV and the Division of Journalism want to thank our underwriters, North Park Center in Dallas, Javier's Gourmet Mexicano on Cole Avenue, and Advance ER off West Lovers Lane. We appreciate your support of student media.